The other advice is follow your heart because I think a lot of times we don't listen to ourselves and that when we do and do the things we really want to do, that's where the gold is. Welcome to Midlife Dialogues, where we are continuing our conversation with Lisa Louise Adams, someone who has built herself an amazing life and career around her art. Last time, we talked about Lisa Louise's artwork and teaching creativity to others through art. This time, I want to ask you, Lisa Louise, about What led you to this life that you're living now? Is this something, were you always on this path or did you at some point make a 90 degree turn? Definitely there was a turn. Yeah, I grew up very uh, studious and square and loved science and math and went off to college thinking that I would become a scientist and got a job working at Scripps in San Diego and realized, oh, I do not want to live in a lab. What I imagined a scientist was, was an inventor. And so I was, I was a little at a loss because I'm like, now what? In thinking about being an inventor, I got the brainy idea to become an artist. (laughs) So there I was at University of California in San Diego. They, at that time, had no art department, but they did have like a, an auxiliary, like adult education thing. So I took my first pottery class and I took a class on being a mime of all things and and a painting class. I'm so grateful that I made that decision because I have a lot of scientific friends. They study one thing. And for me, I want to study everything. Like I just love everything. So it wouldn't have worked well for me. And I'm glad I got that before I went to graduate school and did my intern, you know, all the things. That's how I I got involved in art. But as my sisters remind me, I was always embroidering, drawing, cutting off buttons and making earrings and making necklaces. You know, like I was always making things, but my brother was the one who drew and was the artist in the family. So I think if you're a parent, never label your kids because my older sister was the smart one. My brother was the artist. I was the middle one and my sister was the athlete. But those other categories seem to already be taken. But anyway, that's part of life is just finding out who you are. And we did have a mother who loved to travel. So one summer we drove all across the United States up to Montreal to Expo 67. And then uh, one year, we traveled to 22 countries in Europe for eight months in a VW camper with four kids. Can you imagine that? My mom and dad. Ah. <laughs> what, about school? what about school? Eight months. How did you? My mom go? was a teacher. So we had our workbooks oh. and she made sure we did our homework. And also every day, was class because we went to so many churches and ruins and museums. The whole thing was an educational tour for sure. After I moved to Hawaii, I entered my ninth university at University of Hawaii at Hilo, and I finally got my bachelor's degree. And then I went and I got my teaching certificate. And then I went and I got my uh, master's in education. What is the most satisfying thing about your life right now, the way you have constructed it? I think what's satisfying is I really feel like I'm of service. And that's what I want. I want to feel like all my experience is helping not just me, but it's helping Hawaii. It's helping my world, my community that I'm in. And a lot of children that I work with don't know how talented they are. And so I can point that out to them. I can give them the opportunity to connect with their creativity. I find little ones, they, they're they creative, they're going for it, they're doing it, but I can give them some skills that can really benefit their work as they move through in life. And then even the older kids, you know, in high school, some of them just need to be reminded how creative they are and that they don't have to give up on their talents and their gifts. I think that's one of the really rewarding things about my work in the schools is being of service and, and helping people. But I also love to help adults because they're in a worse boat because they've given up on it, right? So that to me is something that, because I focused for quite a few decades, actually, of being in the schools, that I'm very interested in helping adults too, to connect with that. And just those one hour workshops, when people leave feeling like they're connected to their dream, what's better than that? 
I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what could be better is me helping them actually do it. So I think, you know, I think that's my next step. I have to say, I have known you for a very long time and I have never seen you anything but joyful. I've never seen you in a bad mood or grumpy. You just walk around spreading joy. So I think you're spreading more than just the creativity and the knowledge that people can do it. I, and I think it's wonderful. Would the child that you used to be be surprised to see you now and what you're doing? Definitely. <laughs> I was the shyest little girl. It's taken me so long to not be shy. Oh. And now I just love interacting with people and becoming a mother was really helpful to me to just come into my own. And then also being a teacher, you can't be shy in front of a group of kids, right? Like we're all having fun and I'm kind of a goofball. So that's okay. They don't care. <laughs> So yeah, so it works out. Yeah, I have definitely grown a lot. Can I ask you how old you are? 65. And how do you feel about being that age? Really good. I just think it just keeps getting better every year. <laughs> and, and every year goes faster and better. I get to just do things I want. <laughs> so that's good. That's great. Good for you. Yeah, how I learned how to say no. That was huh? a hard lesson. I learned how to say yes to what I want to do. How old do you feel? I feel good. I, I wouldn't want to put a number on it because I just don't, I don't think like that. I don't know. Yeah. I feel good. <laughs> Happy, alive, vital, ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. If you had to sum up your life right now in three words, what might they be? Grateful, inspired, joyful. Those are great words. That's that's a good life you've got going on if those are your three words. What advice would you give to someone who wanted to embrace their life more? I think the first part is really getting clear on what's important to you, what your values are, what you hold dear that have nothing to do with our culture, our society, you know, like what expectations people put on us, especially as women, we are so put in this box of a nurturer or a this or a that. And I really feel like when we can really stand for what's important to us, our life is so much better because we are really on purpose. Okay, so you're taking a stand, you are figuring out what you can get rid of that isn't in line with your values. Like, like I don't watch TV because I don't have time. I don't know how people have time. <laughs> All these people are like, oh, you got to watch this movie or this show or something. And I'm like, you know, I just, I don't know when they do that because I'm taking classes. I'm learning new things. So I think if you can kind of prioritize what you could get rid of that is not helping you to live your your best life that's a good other thing to do the other thing is to really notice how much we compromise what we want to get done in our life like our life is pretty short right and so a lot of people put off till later what they really want to do and i think it's important even if you just did it 15 minutes a day just a little tiny bit to remind yourself how important it is to you right there's lots of little hacks i believe in index cards <laughs> and I put my to-do list on there and then I have a to-do list for the week and then I have a to-do someday list. Sometimes just being a little more um, on purpose and intentional, I think is what I recommend to people. Do you have a philosophy about living that you say out loud or that you think to yourself or a quote or something? I think my philosophy is I'm here to serve and make the world better. And so how can I live into that? while also making, I'm part of that too. So what makes me happy is also going to help me to be better in the world and to be of more service because I'm happy. Oh, that's great. That's a good reminder. Don't be afraid to try something new. Be a beginner again. Like it's not a bad thing to be horrible at something. It's actually good to remember that uh, learning new things takes time and that the more that we can explore and experiment, we will discover new things. I feel myself so I can feel others. And I think that is part of what has made my life so good because I get to do really fun things. And then when I'm serving other people, 
I'm full. And so I have that extra to give and I don't feel burned out or depleted or in a rut. Being an artist, you're doing something new all the time too. So maybe if you feel like you're in a rut to um, try something new or try something you would never do, right? <laughs> because maybe you'll never do it again. But if you try it once, the other advice is follow your heart. Because I think a lot of times we don't listen to ourselves and that when we do and do the things we really want to do, that's where the gold is. That's great. That's great. I will also put a link down below for anyone who's interested in your creativity course, because that might be right up someone's alley. So, And it's just an hour and it's free. So that's easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Lisa Louise. I have really enjoyed talking to you. And thank you everyone for watching Midlife Dialogues and we'll see you next time.